with St. Paul's Hospital, you know, I feel like it's, it's always been renowned as a good teaching hospital. And so our family medicine residency is very short. Uh, and when you have a short residency period, you're trying to make the most of every rotation that you get. Family medicine has changed over the years. There's been a lot of emphasis, at least in 2014, 2016, when I was doing my residency, on considering doing obstetric care. But there's been a lot of, a lot of shift now where we're looking at addictions being a core rotation in the family medicine program. I got good exposure, but when I came here, I realized that there was a lot for me to learn. Actually, not just a lot, more than a lot to learn. So then I started going to courses and conferences, and I, and I actually developed, got the opportunity to have really good mentors on the way for addictions, Canada-wide. So they've helped me significantly grow, and then as I got more comfortable, then I could not just look at how I'm gonna apply it, but when I was comfortable with my own knowledge base, then I look at operationally how I'm gonna do that in a rural community. And that operational part was through trial and error because there's no sort of handbook on that. Anyone that works, say, in Vancouver or other bigger, bigger cities would struggle in the geographical vast area where Hope and the Fraser Canyon involves lack of pharmacies, lack of transport, all those sort of services, and outreach workers. I, was, I wasn't sure how I was going to apply or provide ad appropriate addiction services all in one roof. I understood that a lot of people that struggle with addictions don't want to go to multiple areas to get services. And there were various clinics in Chilliwack uh, and other cities where, had, where they had that model. And so initially I thought to myself, how can I get these patients to get excellent service under that umbrella there? So in my growth, I did work with other physicians in other cities to just learn under them to get more experience. And in doing so, where I thought the services were excellent, I would then look to pay for a bus for once a week for the patients to be brought over to that area where they had mental health counseling, where they had uh, good addiction services, and then also the, the care that they deserved, including social work and disability care as well. He's been the most accessible doctor I've ever had. Uh, I'm sure that you've heard that from other people. Um, and if you haven't, it's true. Uh, he, I, I consider Dr. Grover more of a friend than a, a doctor. He's a friend who just happens to be a doctor. Um, and uh, I can access him at any time if I need to. I've always respected it. Uh, it's not like I call him and go, hey, what's going on? You know, what are you doing? I, I can call him at any time with any question and he usually answers and if he doesn't, he'll answer shortly. That was a huge part of it. Um, as well as he told me he would do anything meds-wise to keep me from going back. And any time I had a problem where I felt like I was losing control in the, in the hospital and being like, okay, this is too much, I gotta go. Uh, I'd call him and he'd fix it uh, through his uh, regiment, right? So that was something completely new and different uh, from anything I've ever experienced in it with a doctor um, or anyone else that I know has ever experienced from a doctor. It's just something that's not heard of. It's hands-on. Uh, it's not wait until the next Sunday when I'm done with my uh, golf tournament. It's now, right? 